We're starting this trip in Scarborough on the eastern edge of North Yorkshire. Now from the coast across the moors to the Yorkshire Dales, there are 42 libraries in North Yorkshire. But the local council has put a big question mark over 24 of them. They're either going to close or maybe be run not by librarians, but volunteers. Now, depending on who you talk to, this either marks a big moment in the birth of the so-called big society or a dire threat to one of the most treasured parts of our national life. A good 15 minute drive from Scarborough is Eastfield, where there's one of four libraries in the Scarborough area which is under threat. Eastfield is one of the most deprived areas in North Yorkshire. Here's an example of why libraries are brilliant places. Here we are, 50 minutes from Scarborough, and the local library has a copy of Dylan's Visions of Sin, which is a really forensic, passionate work of scholarship about Bob Dylan. That reflects my own experience of using libraries. The reason I'm a journalist is partly because I used to go to my local library every week, get out a different music book, and that's how I became aware that you could earn a living by writing about music. Since then, times may have changed, but looking around Eastfield's Community Resource Centre, it's obvious that this place has changed with them and done everything politicians have asked of it. It's so much more than coming in to get a book. You've just got to look at that sign behind you. Welcome to your community resource centre. It doesn't say welcome to your library. Coming for books, we have meetings in the meeting rooms yeah. here. Only one in four people in Eastfield actually have internet in their homes. So to actually access internet and all the services that are now online, you have to come to the library and use that. We're in the top ten deprived areas and if you take this away you are taking education away from the young people which is going to make it worse I mean you know they can't learn everything in school they need references they need computers you know uh, we're just going to get worse you know the, the, the estate will just die if it turns out that the only way of saving this place is to bring volunteers in to run it would any of you step forward I would step forward to yeah. volunteer mm -hmm. but not step forward to start the process off because I think that would just be so difficult to do yeah. but I would volunteer yeah. I, I would cleaning volunteer. if it meant the fact that the library staff was di dismissed and I was asked, asked to volunteer then the answer is no yeah. because I won't take a paid job no. off somebody this is the consultation form that the council has issued about the local library service it says things like do you strongly agree agree Neither agree nor disagree, disagree or disagree strongly with such statements as I understand why the library needs to make changes to the library service. I would be interested in accessing a community-run library. The proposed changes will not affect me or my organisation. There's a big box here, it says what ideas do you have for other ways we could save 2.3 million in library and community services? <laughs> Scarborough, we head across the snowy moors to talk to the man responsible for North Yorkshire's libraries. The council's got a massive challenge. It would be naive to assume that taking out the numbers, that the, the figures that they are, over this period, particularly with it being front-loaded, it would be naive to think that that wasn't going to affect frontline services, because it will. Over the past three or four years, I've been taking out efficiency savings year on year to the tune of at least 3% a year. I've been taking back office stuff out, I've been taking <coughs> layers of management out, I've restructured the department to death. The settlement's been front-loaded, by that I mean that we've got to find more in the first couple of years than we would in, the, you know, it's not evenly spread across the four. You've got to save two million from the library's budget over four years. Yeah, That's right. and, and two million, uh, 2.1 million um, from a budget of 7.5, so it's getting on for a third of the budget, okay? So now um, we're out to consultation where we're saying to communities, if you want to save your library, work with us uh, and obviously we will try and find ways. It'll be different in, in each place simply because you know, population sizes are different, um, the um, commitment or the motivation of local communities to sort of get involved. The idea that your local library will be run by librarians unfortunately isn't affordable in many cases now. No, it's not, no, no. It will be run in the sense of professional support and training for those volunteers that will be taking that on. Yeah. And of course, there'll always be an infrastructure. I mean, we are, we, are, we are maintaining, obviously, a big library presence by having 18 that will remain, uh, and those for 80%. Can people get to them, though? Yes. Because obviously, public transport subsidies are being cut at the same Eight, time. 80%, 80 of the use of our libraries are in those 18. But if the, if the remaining 20% yeah, live in the back of beyond, the other can 20, they get to your Pickerings the, and your Scarboroughs the other, and, and your North Allertons to use those? Well, that's, got, that's going to be more challenging. <laughs> 
To get a sense of those challenges, we headed to the town of Beedale and one of the smaller rural libraries under threat. My husband and I were so upset at the thought that we might lose our library that we thought, if nothing else, we can start a petition. They're all from within a good 10 mile radius travelling to Beedale to the library. If this library did close, perish the thought, mm -hmm. where would the nearest library be? North Allerton. North Allerton. Which is how oh, far from here? Another, ten, ten another miles eight there. miles oh, further rip, rip on, isn't it? 11. So if you're living yeah. in one of these outlying areas, you, you could be looking at, what, a 20 mile trip? A 20 yes. mile trip. So Easily. 40, 40, 40, 40 mile, mile round, round trip. trip. I mean, it's that personal, oh, I think you'd like this one. I've just put it aside for you. I think it's brilliant. You might need librarians to it. See, the idea is oh, maybe the volunteers just have. But you do need people that know about books. If it was run by volunteers, which is one thing people are talking about, what do you think of that idea? Well, I'd volunteer. You would? Yeah. I've, I love books, and I, I'd, I'd be quite happily working in a library anyway. So, And I wouldn't be surprised if there would be enough people in the area that would do that. What we've found is that when, if communities are faced with a real loss of a, a service that they've been used to, we've been surprised as to how many people have come forward. Is this a permanent or a temporary change? In other words, when the financial situation improves, might librarians re-enter the picture in volunteer-run libraries? I just think the, the nature of local government and the shape of local government was so different in four or five years' time. You know, who, who knows how this will bed? I, I, think, I think what will be absolutely clear is that it will concentrate um, county councils and other councils' um, uh, attention on the real priorities and what it is that people are saying they want to spend their council tax money on. North Yorkshire experienced its largest earthquake in over 40 years last night. They just, like a, a shudder of a, a bush, as if a big rock were put into a backyard. Tumultuous days in North Yorkshire, and we're told by the council that a flavour of how rural libraries might work in the future can be found in the village of Hudswell, where people have come together to buy out the local pub and expand what it offers. A story held up as an example of the big society by the Tory Libraries Minister, Ed Vasey. We thought it, it's no use just reopening a pub that they're not sustainable nowadays. It had to be a community pub which involved all aspects of the community and this is, this is one part of it. These books are supplied to you by... By the County Library Service. Right, okay. Who've been extremely helpful actually. A volunteer from the village looks after the shelves and makes sure that it's sort of kept tidy and everything. You must have heard this expression. This is a living, breathing example of the big society. <laughs> William Hague said that when he opened <laughs> it. Uh, it. It's one view uh, and others think it's, it's local socialism. Uh, you, you pick and choose whichever term you want to use. <laughs> Which side of the fence do you fall? Uh, towards the local socialism. Right. Okay. Local people here have rescued the community pub and opened a shop and in doing so they've made up for a failure of the market. But it was suggested that we come here because it might say something about the big society and the idea of using volunteering to replace services traditionally provided by the state. Now those five shelves of books there are great, but they're really not much of a replacement for a traditional library. The state has never really run pubs, apart from in wartime, I think, but there's probably a reason why libraries have always been in the public sector. <laughs> When I was growing up, it was taken for granted that libraries were a universal service. Now, after years of being chipped away, they're about to take a really sharp drop. It's great that in a place like Hudswell, people get together to sort of spread books around the community. And in other places in North Yorkshire, people will get together and step forward as volunteers to keep libraries open. But there's no question that in some places that did have libraries, they're not going to have them anymore. And that is a tragedy.